Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Emil K. Fitzson. I'm with AI Tech Defense Systems. Uh, AI Tech designs and makes rugged electronics for military, aerospace, space, and industrial applications. And today I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence. As you may know, artificial intelligence uh, is defined as intelligence demonstrated by machines in contrast of natural intelligence, which is demonstrated by uh, humans or animals. Uh, due to the uh, progress in electronics development and processing capabilities, for a long time artificial intelligence is no longer a dream of science fiction writers. AI systems do exist, and they found more and more applications in military, industrial, and commercial world. Artificial intelligence in includes machine learning. How do machines learn? Basically, machines are emulating human brain activities. They're also filling gaps in knowledge, and subset of deep learning or oh, sub subset of machine learning is deep learning. Deep learning is uses multi-layer artificial neural networks to deliver state-of-the-art accuracy in object recognition, speech recognition, language translation, and many, many other tasks. Uh, before we start deep learning discussion, uh, let's talk about a few definitions first. Uh, first of all, deep learning is based on deep neural networks. A uh, deep neural network consists of the nodes with multiple inputs and single output interconnected to each other. Uh, also important term is CUDA, which is a parallel computing platform and programming model developed by NVIDIA uh, for general computing on, on GPGPUs. Another important term is NVIDIA digits, which is a deep learning GPU training system developed by NVIDIA for training of deep learning models. And another concept is uh, teraflops. Teraflops is a trillion uh, floating operations per second uh, used to define performance of uh, artificial intelligence systems. So how human brain works? Based on the learned information, neurons are prioritizing different inputs fed to the brain. And outputs of those neurons are passed to other neurons for further action or processing. So computing based on deep uh, learning models provides continu continuous learning, increased intelligence over time. Uh, it allows to deliver more accurate and faster results. NVIDIA CUDA model uses deep learning capabilities to address complex computing problems. And it, it provides parallel computing platform. It includes application programming interface for these models. It includes, capabi uh, includes capability for training in object recognition and classification. And also it provides increased intelligence and efficiency in defining basic and complex <coughs> object and will assign a context. The most basic uh, neural network model is a perceptron. It's shown on the slide, uh, on the bottom. Uh, on the left side, perceptron has several inputs, which corresponds to the features, various features of the object, which, which are used during object classification. Each feature is assigned different weight based on the importance of that feature in object classification. Output of the perceptron is connected to, to other network model to create a neural network. A multi-layer neural network model consists of several perceptron-like nodes. A good example of that multi-layer neural network is shown in the picture on the slide. In that picture, AI system, which is trained to recognize modes of transportation, uh, looks at the picture on the left. The first stage 
of the multilayer neural network defines that object in the picture, it's a vehicle. It's not a train, it's not a bicycle. The neck face further narrows down the selection, so it defines it as a four-door sedan instead of truck or minivan. Uh, down selection process continues until the point when the model defines object in the picture as an Audi A7 car. In general, image processing tasks you can divide by three categories. It includes image classification, image location, and image segmentation. Image classification, it's a recognition of the object. Image location defines specific location of the object in the image and defining its coordinates. And image segmentation locates object boundaries, lines, and curves. A picture on the right shows AI system using all three processes. First, it defines, it finds all objects in the image, it classifies them, it puts boundaries around the objects and put, puts a name of the object on the screen. Uh, such image processing tasks require very heavy duty mathematical calculations. If you try to do such calculations on a gen on the general CPU, soon you'll find out the CPU is not keeping, keeping up with the task. CPU will be choking and will slow down the OS. In order to improve performance, you will have to use multi-core high frequency CPUs, which will require high power and associated power dissipation issues. For such image processing applications, GPGPUs are ideal because of the ability to run parallel operations on multiple CUDA cores inside the GPGPU. A good example of comparison between conventional processor performance and GPGPU is shown on the screen. On the top, you see that uh, image processing is run on, on regular CPU, and it's only capable to process five, five images per second. Uh, when you see, on the bottom, you see NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPGPU, which can process more than 900 images per second. That clearly indicates that GPGPUs are more suitable for image processing applications. Diagram on this slide shows the process of developing and training deep learning models. Uh, if you can see on the left side, you have NVIDIA G Digits application. It can be used as a web-based. Also, you can download it on the lab PC, which has NVIDIA GPGPU inside. Once you have system set up, you can download images for the application you're trying to create. Uh, NVIDIA Digits tool provides you data management uh, utilities, so you can download images, assign classification to them. After you download all your images and create a model, you can do deep training of the model and you have tools to assess efficiency of your model. Once the model is created, you can download it to the right to NVIDIA product AI system, and it will be ready for deployment after you verify uh, if the model behaves as you expected it. I can give you an example so you can better understand the process. Let's say you need to create a surveillance system for the entrance to the, to the water, to, for the water entrance monitoring of the naval uh, military base. So first you can download images of the US warships and non-US warships. And then you download the images of commercial vessels and you download the images of smaller civilian boats. Once you assign classification parameters, you can train the model, do deep training, and download the model to the AI system for final deployment. Now, 
how improved intelligence over time works. When you deploy the system, every time the system is used, it will be able to, re to recognize object, it's straight to recognize faster and faster. But the one thing it cannot do, it cannot do recognize object, it was not trained to recognize. So let's say in six months, customer comes back saying, oh, your system works great, uh, but we need to add more capabilities. Now we want to, to be able to recognize people on jet skis and pedal boats. So what you will need to do, you'll need to take your original train model in the NVIDIA digits, add objects, add, add images of the jet ski, people on jet skis and pedal boats, retrain your model, and download it in the field for, for future use. Uh, while GPGPUs are ideal for image processing applications, they still need regular CPU to take an action based on the analyzed information. So combination of GPGPU and CPU creates AI-capable supercomputer. NVIDIA developed several high-performance, low-power supercomputers on, on the module. Uh, for example, Jetson TX2, which is based on Tesla, uh, on Pascal architecture, includes six ARM core processor, 256 core CUDA GPGPU, and it can provide one teraflop performance at only 15 watts of power. And the next generation, Xavier, which is based on Volta architecture, includes eight cores, ARM processor, 512 CUDA cores GPGPU, and it can provide 2.8 teraflop performance at 30 watts of power, and more than four teraflops at full 40 watt, uh, 45 watts of power. So AI systems based on such small low power system on the module are suitable for use on drones and small UAVs applications. So what are the advantages of AI systems? Uh, with high definition video and sensors, it, it can provide a real-time reliable operation for the surroundings, which is ideal for autonomous systems like drones and small UAVs. Uh, also, AI can assess threats, issue warnings, and eliminate false alarms in surveillance security systems. Uh, if you ever watch movie Sniper, you may recall an episode when the sniper in heavy camouflage is slowly crawling across the field to get closer to the target. His partner was able to spot him only because he knew from which direction the sniper was coming. Uh, but security guards couldn't see him even when we, uh, they walked by in a few feet. Even if you have a security operator staring at the screen in the exact spot of sniper's location, it will be very, very hard for him to detect sniper's movement but AI systems can be configured to detect such movements. AI systems don't get tired, they don't get distracted, they just compare pixels to pixels. All you need to do is set up to trigger on differences in the images. Uh, another important uh, feature is ability of AI systems to reduce data transfers and storage required for uh, various uh, security and surveillance operations. Uh, for example, to store uh, one minute of HD SDI video at 1080p resolution 60 hertz refresh rate, you'll need about 200 megabytes of space. If you need to do it for 24 hours, it will require almost 300 gigabytes of space. But if you program a system only to store uh, video when something was going on. Let's say a security camera is installed at remote location. Uh, when only a few minutes per day, something is going on. In that case, you can save hundreds of gigabytes per camera. Uh, you can imagine how much you can save if you have 1,000 cameras installed on the southern border. So AI systems are widely used in military aerospace applications. 
They used autonomous systems, drones, video recording equipment, radars, radars flight simulators, surveillance systems, GPU rendering applications like navigation, maps, etc. You can put a small AI system on a warfighter to provide 360 degrees live video feed to his helmet so he can detect threats coming from any direction. Uh, also, AI systems are widely used in industrial applications. Smart cities, security surveillance, trains, drones, industrial automation, automotive, driverless cars, trucks. In the surveillance systems, you can only, not only detect and recognize objects, you can detect abnormal object behavior. Like you can send alarm when armed people are detected or when people are acting abnormally, or trying to hide, crawl, moving in shadows. So you can send notification to security companies or call police to the hotspot. So the future is here. AI systems are available in small form factors card level and higher power enclosure products. And if you're looking for a reliable AI hardware solution for your next projects, check with AI Tech. After all, AI Tech stands for artificial intelligence. Thank you. <laughs>